young ladies from Grand Valley University, Grand Rapids uh, Catholic Central, Grand Rapids West Catholic. I had all of the mentors who came and had lunch with us today. Uh, Kettering University, all of, our, all of our young ladies that spent time with you today. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. I also uh, just got to get a plug in for all of our corporate sponsors. You know, we can't do this without financial support from some of the businesses in town. You know, we put this idea together last year. Uh, you sit down and you say, now, can we do this? And they say, well, how much money is it going to cost? And we say, well, well uh, uh, X amount of money. And uh, what we do is we go out and we go to businesses and we ask for their help and their financial support. And one of the nice things was Fifth Third Bank this year. They, they helped us do all the marketing for this event. So uh, if you're going to open up a savings account, go to Fifth Third. <laughs> okay. They'll, they'll work with you. Um, they were fantastic. Um, the American Association of University Women. Now, there's, there's raise your hand back there. there there's, there's back there, there's two uh, retired young ladies from the American Association of University Women. That's what we hope you grow up to be, a retired American Association of University Women. You go on and get your degree and you, you keep active. Um, Grand Rapids Community College, Dr. Batten over here, Jennifer, and any other uh, volunteers from Community College who are in here, thank you very, very much. We could not have done this without you. Then we have Kettering University out of Flint. We got Eve Vitali right here, and we got Armin Omedian in the back there. When we first started this project, Armin had a full head of hair. Now look at him today. <laughs> you want to stand up, Armin? <laughs> <You know? laughs> Big hand for Armin. Thank you, and Kettering. I want to I wanna thank Rockford Construction and AMDG Architects. They, uh, they wrote the check to cover the cost of the T-shirts. And then I want to thank the uh, young ladies from uh, West Catholic and Catholic Central. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, today, our, our keynote speaker is the chief financial officer for Fifth Third Bank of Grand Rapids, West Michigan. That means she's the chief financial officer. She's in charge of all the finances at Fifth Third Bank here in West Michigan. She has a bachelor's of arts degree in accounting from Michigan State University in East Lansing. <laughs> she's worked at Northern Star Minerals as an accountant, Jackson National Life Insurance as an investment analysis, and she is a board member for the Southeast YMCA and a board member for John Ballpark Zoo. She's going to talk to you for about 15 to 20 minutes here, and I'm very proud to introduce to you Miss Tracy Hornbeck from Fifth Third Bank. Tracy Hornbeck, and I am the Chief Financial Officer at Fifth Third Bank. So I am very proud and honored to be here with you guys today. What a great looking uh, group of girls here today. And as a matter of fact, you all remind me a little bit of myself at your age. Like many of you, I also liked math, but I have a secret to confess. I wasn't always very good at it. But my parents told me that I could do just about anything, and I believed them, and I still do believe that, and so should you. So I worked really, really, really hard at math, and eventually I got a career in math that I absolutely love. Let's see if I can take this out of here. There we go. So I know that you guys have worked on um, several great projects today, and hopefully um, you have found out that doing things like math and science and engineering and technology can also be fun. 
So did you guys have fun? You had fun with the things you did today? Good. Well, I would also like to have a little bit of fun. I'm sure I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my career and what I do and how math helped me get there. But I'm also going to do a little bit of trivia today. I am going to ask about 10 questions. And the surprise is I actually have some prizes. I have some gift cards. I brought 10 gift cards with me today. Each of these gift cards are worth $25. And you can pretty much spend them wherever you like. It's like a credit card. So when I ask a question, don't be shy about giving me an answer. Just raise your hand. I'll pick someone. And then um, if you can get the answer right, then we'll go ahead. And by the way, most of the questions are not very hard. Um, so again, don't be shy. Um, but anyway, so I'll eventually I'll need some help um, from someone who might be willing to take a mic around um, and help me pass some gift cards out. So it looks like we've got that over there. So I think we'll just go ahead and get started. So I'm going to actually start with a question. So my ver oh, so we have an arm up already, and we don't even know what the question is. <laughs> oh, you were just scratching. Okay. So my first question is, who is... Justin Bieber's girlfriend. Oh, I'm just kidding. That's not a real question. <laughs> Everyone in the room knew, though. Everybody knows it's Taylor Swift, right? No, of course not. It's Selena. Yes, I know that. <laughs> so, all right. So my first question is a math question, and this is a really easy one that you can do in your head, and it's going to let me know if you were paying attention. So I brought a certain number of gift cards that I told you, and... I told you how much they were worth. So how much am I going to be giving away today? I'm going to go with the girl who's waving her hand in the green right there in the glasses. Right over here? Yep. You got it right. You win the first gift card. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay, so I'm going to start by telling you a little bit about who I am. Um, first and foremost, I'm a mom. Yes, I have a big job at work, but I also have a big job at home. I have been married to my husband, John, for about 14 years, and we have three boys, Jacob, Matthew, and Ryan. Jacob is my oldest. He's about many of your age. He's in fifth grade. He's 10 years old. And he loves sports. He plays basketball, he plays baseball, he plays soccer, golf, football, you name it, he does it. But he's also an avid reader and an excellent student because he knows that I would not let him play sports if he wasn't also a good student. I think he's probably at home buried in a book right now. He is um, just about to finish the last Harry Potter book. So that's pretty exciting. I know, I've read all seven books as well. It's very, very good. So um, my second son is Matthew. He is seven years old, and he's in second grade. He also plays the same sports as Jacob, but he's a little bit more passionate about science and art and math. Um, as a matter of fact, he's a really great artist. He and several um, students from his school actually participated in Art Prize, so we're pretty proud of him for that. And then just this last year at the end of first grade, he had to take a test to see how he, um, how he performed in math. And he did so well that he and eight of his other classmates actually got to skip all of second grade math and go right up to do uh, third grade math with the third graders this year. So we're really proud of him for that. And then my youngest, his little Ryan, he turns three in two days. He is very, <laughs> he adds a lot of excitement to our life, probably a little too much excitement on most days. Um, he's actually going to have a birthday party tomorrow, a Mickey Mouse birthday party. So he uh, is excited about having a day that's all about him. <laughs> but anyway, so in spite of my career success, um, my boys all know that they are number one in my life. And that's just how it goes. And we make it work out so that um, when I'm at work, I do things with work. And when I'm home, they know that I'm there for them. So how many of you have a working mom? Raise your hand. Wow, most of you in the room. That's fantastic. So you guys know what it's like, especially if you have two working parents, how crazy things get. You have to juggle lots of things. You have to be flexible. And so I would just say, you know, keep that mindset. Stay flexible. You know, sometimes with me and my boys, sometimes we will have dinner at the soccer field instead of the dinner table because that's just how it works. Or sometimes we will 
uh, I'll help them study for a spelling test over the phone when I'm on my way to a meeting. Or sometimes they come to a meeting with me, and that's just kind of how it goes. You just have to be flexible. But my boys know, um, and I think they're pretty proud of me too, that I have a big job, but yet they know that I'm um, there for them. So I am going to do my second question now. And what I would like to know is who in this room has a mom that works outside of the home that works really hard and you're proud of what she does and I want to hear why you admire her. All right, we're going to go right here, the girl in red. Yes. Um, I think she is a good support and she works very hard because she's the manager there and she always tries her best and she comes home and talks to us about her problems at work with like all her employees and then she figures out solutions for all the employees that she has. Excellent. That sounds like a great job. There you go. It's nice that you're proud of your mother. So let me tell you a little bit about what I do for the bank. As I mentioned, I'm a chief financial officer. I work for Fifth Third. It's kind of a funny name, huh? Um, it used to be called Old Kent Bank here in Grand Rapids. Maybe some of you have heard of that. I've been with the bank for about 15 years, and I'm actually going to do another question right now. Does anyone know what a chief financial officer does? Okay, we have an enthusiastic person right here. And it's okay to guess, and let me give you a hint. I do not sit in the vault and count money all day. That's not what I do. <laughs> a chief financial mark uh, manager, this is, I'm guessing, they work with all the finances, the mortgages, and all that s stuff, and they're the manager of all of it. Like, they have to handle all of it. That is a very good guess. There you go. And you are actually very close. So there are not very many women chief financial officers in the banking industry. As a matter of fact, there aren't many in most industries. We have, um, within Fifth Third, about 18 different affiliates. And in all 18 of those affiliates, I am the only woman chief financial officer. So I hope that that motivates some of you to think about getting a career in finance someday, and then hopefully one of you will follow in my footsteps. So let me tell you about what I do in a nutshell. Most of you have parents that live on a budget, right? Whether you live with mom or dad or both mom and dad, they go to work, they make money, and then they deci decide what to spend their money on. Some of their money goes to paying for your home or your clothes or a car. Some of it might go for food or utility bills. But at the end of the day, if they've done a really good job managing their budget, they'll have some extra money left over, probably to save or maybe invest so that they can make more money. Well, businesses need to do that too. And it usually takes a person or a group of people to do that for a business. So essentially, I set out a budget and I help them stick to it and make sure that the bank manages to its budget. That's what I do in a nutshell. Now, that might sound kind of boring to some of you, but you should also know that I get to do lots of fun things. I get to travel. I get to do lots of fun events like this one. I get to work with some pretty amazing people, and we get to make lots of cool decisions about how to make the company better. And the other thing is um, I'm really proud of what our company does. And when you are guessing what I do, you mention mortgages. Well, a bank gets to help people. We get to let them borrow money so they can buy a home or buy a car, or we help them save so that they can retire or send their kids to college, which I know um, all of you are going to do someday. So that makes me really proud. So speaking of college, it sounds like there might be some MSU fans in here. I actually see a sweatshirt over here. So I got a fun question now. And this one is, does anyone know who MSU's mascot is? Let's see, how about someone way in back? I see a girl right back at the, yep, you. MSU's mascot. Can't think of it? Okay, let's see somebody else. Um, right here in the blue. It is Sparty, the Spartans. 
There you go. All right. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about my education. First, I told you all that I wasn't that good in math. So I knew I had to study really hard because I knew I wanted to work for a big company someday. I knew I wanted to have a degree in business, which meant I was going to have to take accounting classes and finance classes. And you can't really do all of that unless you're good at math. So I had to work really hard at that. And as a matter of fact, I graduated from Michigan State with an accounting degree. I think, uh, I think we told you that. And really what I would like you to know is that at your age, you really do need to start thinking about college. Maybe you aren't at the point where you're going to visit colleges, but if you're starting to think about what you might want to do someday, you really should start thinking today about what colleges will help you, get, um, help you make the choices to get to the career that you would like. So I have another card to give away already. This one has to do with college. I would like to know if there's anyone in this room that has already started to think about what college they would like to go to, and I want you to tell me why you are choosing that college. I'll go right there. Um, I want to go to MSU because I sort of want to be a vet. Excellent. MSU has an outstanding veterinary program. I hope that you accomplish that goal. All right, so let me tell you a little bit about the jobs I've had because they haven't always, um, I haven't always been a CFO. So I did a little bit of babysitting. How many of you have done some babysitting? Probably a lot. Uh, but my first job was as a salad girl. Now, most of you could probably imagine what that was. I chopped up vegetables, chopped up salad, put them in the salad bar, and then when people messed it up, I had to clean it all up and do it all over again. Well, after one summer, I realized that that was not going to be the love of my life job. So my next job, which I worked all through high school, was at a camera shop. And I liked that job better. It was fun. But I still knew that it wasn't a job that I would love for the rest of my life. So again, I knew I wanted to work for a big company. I knew I wanted something in finance. And what I started to do was research companies. I actually grew up in Muskegon. Is anyone here from Muskegon? No? Yes? Excellent. I grew up in Muskegon, and I used to come to Grand Rapids a lot. And there were two companies in Grand Rapids that I started to really admire. I learned everything I could about those companies. In high school and even in middle school, I started to do projects on them and learn everything I could. They were two big growth um, companies. I knew they had a lot of opportunity, and I knew that they would be perfect for me um, if I wanted to go into finance or business. And those two companies were Steelcase. How many of you heard of Steelcase? Yep, most of you. And Old Kent Bank at the time. So when I went away to college, got my degree, I knew that I needed to get some experience. So my first real job was for an insurance company in Lansing, and I did some investment work for them. I analyzed their investment portfolio, and after two years, I was ready to come to Grand Rapids and um, uh, tackle my goal of working for one of those two companies. So I called up Old Kent Bank. I told them I wanted to come in and meet with them. I told them I wanted a job. I told them I had always wanted to work there. So they were the first interview. I met with them, and the next day I was hired, just like that. So I have been with them for about 15 years. And after 10 years, so just 10 years, I went from a financial analyst, first job at Old Kent, to a CFO. And I worked really, really hard over those 10 years to make that happen. So my message to you guys is set some goals, and you know that you have to work really, really hard to achieve them. So I'm on to my next question. I would like to know if any of you have started to think about, and I'm actually going to give two cards away for this, um, if you've started to think about what you would like to do when you grow up, and if there's some place that you already have in mind about where you might want to work. So I'm going to do someone in the back here. Okay. Mike, you want to go ahead and pick someone back there, right here? The Okay, perfect. Excellent.
Wow, what an excellent goal. This is for you. All right, let's um, go all the way to the other side of the room. Um, how about this young lady back here in blue? Y yes, you. I want to go into the medical field, and I want to someday hopefully work at Spectrum because my mom works there also. Oh, excellent. Any particular um, field within medical? like um, Probably something like a heart surgeon. Wow. Now that is a big goal. Well, I certainly hope that you are able to achieve that. I know you guys all probably have some pretty amazing goals, especially if you're here today learning about science and math and all of those wonderful things. Okay, so you guys heard what I did and what I would like you to all think about, and I think some of you have already started to do this, is this, this is a great project for you to work on, maybe with um, your parents or maybe a teacher, but I want you to start to think about companies that you might be interested in working for someday. I want you to do research on them. I want you to understand um, what they do and what the future of that company is. Then what I would like you to do, again, maybe you work with um, a parent or a teacher, I want you to call them. I want you to call up that company and let them know that you would like to job shadow there someday. Then, when you're in college, I would like you to go to that company and tell them that you want to do an internship there. And then, when you graduate from college, I would like you to go there and tell them you want a job. And when you get in, I would like you to get in there and knock their socks off. Now, does that seem pretty far-fetched? You know what? It's not. That's just about what happened to me in my career path. So it's not very far-fetched. All right. I want to talk to you about two more things today. We're almost done. The first thing is about community service. One thing that I love about my job is that it allows me to go out and do fun things in the community, to volunteer, to do great events like this today. I have another card to give away. Can anyone tell me why community involvement and community service is important? Um, how about right here? Isn't it because, like, Because if somebody, like the doctors help, if somebody dies, they help them or to save their lives. Yeah, I think you make plenty of good points there. You know, not everyone can save someone's lives like a doctor could, but you know what? Just even every hour that you might do, even if it's a small service project, all of those things help make your community, your city, and your environment better. So I hope that that is something that you start to love someday and that you plan to give back to your community. You know, you heard that I'm on the board at the John Ball Zoo and at the YMCA. Now, what I do for them when I sit on a board, I simply just talk to them about budgeting. I help them budget. I help them stick to their budget. I talk to them about accounting. I talk to them about finance. And it really helps make them um, a better organization. I mean, who doesn't love the John Ball Zoo, right? You know, lots of great things going on there. So anyway, I hope that you find a love for that as well. The last thing that I want to talk to you about is mentoring. Mentoring is a very important part of life at Fifth Third Bank. My boss is also a woman, and she believes very strongly in mentoring other women in the company to help them succeed, help them um, move forward as quickly as possible. And I'm really a product of that. I've had many women in the company help me, give me advice, help give me tools to succeed, and as a result, I believe in that as well. So. Who here can tell me, um, you had an opportunity to be with some mentors today, right? For lunch, and um, I think they were roaming around. Can anyone tell me um, if they learned anything from their mentor today? Um, okay, right here. Yes, I would like to know something that you learned from one of the mentors today. I learned that, oh. Um, that um, if you're a scientist, well, just from the mentor I had today. Well, today I learned that um, 
that if you mix any um any thing um that you can get a whole new substance. Oh, excellent, excellent. Well, hopefully, some of the things that um, you also heard from them today is um, a, a little advice about what to do um, in in terms of making decisions about your career or not even just your career, about your education. So I guess what I would say is I really encourage you to go out and find a mentor. And maybe it's a high school student, maybe it's a college student, maybe it's an aunt or a friend of your parents or someone you know that does a really good job in something that you're interested in. That's really what a mentor is. You find somebody who does a really great job at something you're interested in and you just ask questions and you ask advice. All right, so I'm about to wrap up here today. Um, a couple, I think, parting words that I would have for you today is first and foremost, I am very, very proud of each and every one of you. You came in on a Saturday morning to spend some time with other girls that have very similar interests to you, and hopefully you had a lot of fun learning about science and math and technology and engineering. So my, advi my advice to you is really pretty simple. And it's to have a plan. If you love math, do everything you can to get your hands on every math class you can possibly take. If it's science that you love, do everything you can to take every science class that you can get your hands on. I want you to think about your career and your job and what it takes to get there. If you want to be a CFO like me, you need to know that you need to go to a college that has a good business school. You need to know that you're going to have to take some accounting courses and you're going to have to take some finance courses. So in order to get good at that, what do you do right now? This is my last question of the day. What do you do right now to make sure that you prepare for that? Um, over here, it's a striped shirt right in the middle there. That's right, especially if, if you want to go into business, accounting, and finance, what do you need to study now? Math, that's right. So anyway, um, I guess the last thing I would say to you is, you know, make sure that you do research colleges early. If it's math or science that you love, find a college that excels at that. Do the homework early. Make sure you're asking your parents to take you to colleges to visit the campuses over the summer. Um, I want you all to find a mentor. It can be someone, um, like I said, high school student, college student, find a mentor. And then lastly is just really work hard. Go above and beyond. Do everything you can to study. Do everything you can to help yourself in the long run because good grades now will turn into good grades in high school, will turn into good grades in college, will turn into a great career for you. So finally, I just want to say I want you to be proud of your success, and it's very, very cool to be smart. And remember that, cool to be smart. Work hard, you will never regret it, and it will set you up for your future later. That's all I have for today. Does anybody have questions?